You're listening to Hashtag No Filter with Zach Peter. That's me, your naturally platinum blonde pop culture connoisseur. I'm the reality TV junkie, self-improvement addict, and host with only the hottest tea spilled fresh all week long. Those balls have gotten you in trouble, though. Oh, you yeah. They picked us because we're horny. Yeah. Right. And that's your chronic state. It's 24 7. <laughs> My life has changed so much that it's almost like a completely different life. From the latest news on The Real Housewives. I'm so happy to be here and engage with you. Deep dives into celebrity legal scandals and unfiltered convos with your favorite stars. I've got you covered. And yes, I always keep receipts. Welcome on in, everybody. I am really excited because I have um, I have a great guest on today. I feel like we're going to learn a lot from him. He's a very wise soul. He's an actor. He's a model. You may have seen him on Netflix, or maybe you know him as the Red Power Ranger from Power Rangers Megaforce. Please welcome Mr. Andrew Gray. Hello. Thank you. you thank do? you. That was a beautiful intro. How are you? I'm doing spectacular. Another day above ground and God be the glory to it all. I'm really, really happy. How about you? I'm doing well. Just celebrated Thanksgiving with my family. Had a great weekend. A lot to be grateful for. I know there's a lot going on in the world right now, but I'm just like, okay, tune all up the outside noise out. Tune in. Focus on the the things that I'm grateful for and the things that are going good in my life right now and just go into the holiday season with a really good positive mindset. Attitude's everything. Did you have a good Thanksgiving? I did have a good Thanksgiving. It was one of the first times that I was actually around my whole family at once. I was missing my my grandmother. Uh, She was definitely there in spirit. Uh, She's getting older and can't fly. and It was kind of sad not to have her there. Because you always want to have Graham there, you know, and to hear the stories of when she grew up and what her Thanksgivings were like. And there's always a new memory that pops up. And I just uh, actively listen. I, I, I love my elders. But overall, Thanksgiving was a true blessing. What did she think of your decision to pursue a career in entertainment? Because I, I feel uh, she like ba- some, sometimes family members are like, oh, I don't know if I want you to, to go into entertainment. You know, it can very much go south or very hard to build a career in entertainment. You know, was she, was there a little apprehension from your family? There was more of not, how do I say this? I didn't go into the entertainment field. I didn't know it was a business Mm. um, when I first got into it. And when I mean that is when I was a child, I just loved to recite poetry. I loved going to the theater. Mm. I loved... Uh, go, my grandmother got me season tickets to the theater, and that's something that we did. Uh, and so I didn't understand that it was entertainment. I always saw it as a craft. Mm. Art. As, as an art, as an art form, exactly. And then when I came to Los Angeles, uh, the doors blew me back. <laughs> you know, and then I, then I learned that it, this is a business, and you need to know the business almost as much or even more than you need to know your art. So that you don't, you know, get taken advantage of. Yeah. A lot of other things. How do you feel like your career has gone so far? I mean, you've done modeling. Some of the the campaigns I've seen are pretty spicy. And I was like, oh, I need to hang that one on my wall. You've done acting as, you know, successfully as the Red Power Ranger. Um, definitely got some some good moves. You've done reality TV. I mean, you've kind of had quite... You know, you've checked all the boxes. What has been, you know, your favorite so far? What do you think has brought you the most joy? And what do you think you've learned the most from? My my biggest success is not staying in one box Mm -hmm. and not being held in a box. My management and agents from the beginning were like, you're going to be the romantic, the hunk, the guy that the people that makes men jealous and women <laughs> want to throw themselves at you. Yeah. And I'm like, well, then this is our last day at work together. Mm-hmm. And they're like, what do you mean? That could bring you the global stage. You know, there's things that people find valuable in this world and knowledge and beauty are around the same area. Yeah. That's where I'm going to, you know, always do work that's going to be putting God first. And for me, uh, vanity is not where I'd like to be. So I'm just happy that when I was modeling, and I still do, if it makes sense, it has to make sense. Yeah. 
and also putting strong boundaries down. So I'm very proud of that, you know, to navigate the industry for over a decade and started working with top tier brands. And I still work with top tier brands today uh, by putting my boundaries down, knowing my value. And if they say this is our budget, well, that makes sense for your business. It doesn't make sense for my business, but this is the number I'm looking for. And when you're, you have it, let's talk. Yeah. Which would drive my, and I'm saying this, you know, at 19, 20 years old, my agents are like, (laughs) are you kidding me right now? Someone would kill themselves from that. I'm like, well, then we need to pray for that person. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But it's not that serious guys. There's a billion and five ways to make money. But I want to sleep at night, my, have a clean conscience, you know, and have boundaries and be respected. If you're not respected yeah. in any industry, you're going to be walked all over. Yeah. I'm yeah. curious what your thoughts are on the whole Balenciaga controversy, because I feel like Kim Kardashian is one of their biggest ambassadors right now, and she's come under fire. Obviously, there was a campaign that they ran with a child in it, and then there was a teddy bear that was also in the campaign that was dressed in bondage, and some people felt that it was sexualizing children, and it was inappropriate. Kim Kardashian didn't speak out until more recently, um, and she's like, hey, I took a break because I needed to actually talk to the brand and figure out like what this was, how this happened. They said that they're working on this. Balenciaga's issued a apology and they're, you know, working on it. I'm curious what your thoughts are about, you know, kind of her hesitancy to speak out right away and whether or not you like how you would respond working with a brand in a similar position. Like would you immediately pull out or like what do you think would do you think it was smart for her to kind of take a beat and, and process things and chat with them first? To my knowledge, Kim said she had to reevaluate it. I don't think as any parent, you need to reevaluate anything. Yeah. That's just my full answer. You would immediately pull away from the brand. Absolutely. They've issued an apology. Do you think that that counts for something? I'm a business owner. I run a production studio. I'm the visionary behind it. And nothing gets past me. Yeah without being checked. My business partner was sales for the biggest magazines in the world. Yeah. He was salesman of the year. And he says, our story is a content that drives sales. Everything is checked, rechecked, and then final checked. And then it gets to me. And then you give the final sign off. So it went, it goes through a series of channels And I would imagine a a fashion line like Balenciaga, you have many people running these campaigns. You have many people that are actively brainstorming concepts, ideas, going through, you know, you don't have just one still image. You have a series of photos that you have to actually go through. And I feel like there is a. Yeah. And they checked all their boxes that they wanted to check. And they thought they hit them in a way that, you know, the people who know what they're looking for will find it. And the people that don't won't, but they got caught. Yeah. And it just shows what those people want and who they're serving. Yeah. Where I just you- don't need to be around Balenciaga and I don't respect it. So, you know. What types of brands do you find yourself aligning with currently? I'm about anything that's about my highest, truest self. I'm very much against living my best life because when you live your highest, truest self, that is living your best life. There's living with purpose and infrastructure. And so that's what I look for. How did you get to that place? I feel like a lot of people, you know, were raised in this consumer sort of society and everything's about sensationalism and clickbait. And so in order to find yourself in a really grounded place, How did you end up getting there? I feel like a lot of people that kind of find that journey usually have to kind of lose themselves or they have to hit some sort of rock bottom or something in their life has to kind of shake them up before they're ready to wake up. Where do you think your, you know, decision to kind of look inward and become a lot more spiritual and become a lot more connected to to a higher power came from? I started my journey listening to my grandmother's wisdom, learning the histories of our, of the, of the world and our nation and understanding that we have to let go 
of things so that we can rise. And so going back to the brands and et cetera, none of those things are what I need before I ascend. There's no U-Haul behind the hearse, you know? Where do you see your life kind of going next? Do you do you want to continue to pursue acting? Do you want to, you know, maybe throw your hand back in the reality game? Is there a business that you're looking to kind of continue to build? Yes. And but not I would not call it reality because reality television is not reality. Mm. If you look up the definition of reality television, it said it is to capture this is paraphrasing capture and edit for entertainment sensationalization right whatever is going to get people interested and get them to tune in doesn't have to necessarily be real it allows it allows people to say you're violent Mm. but for any reality star to or reality personality or however you want to label it if they're like well the world's violent then like no 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 no, but you're Mm. really violent it's, it's produced, it's manufactured. And that's not, that. hey, a lot of people do manufacture their life, let's be honest, right? Um, we'll pray for them. But that's not reality. If What I would like to do is a documentary series, documenting life and presenting it in a way that's natural and it will educate. It may provoke um, responses, but not reactions. There's enough of that already, you know, just going through traffic in life, you know, yeah. crossing the street. Do you feel like it's changed some of the people in your life? I believe it influenced them. In what way? To act out. Mm. This is how powerful I know that I am. And I say that with humility over hubris is that I'm so powerful that somebody will say something against me because they're either inspired by me or intimidated by me. None of those are my problem, but then they'll go to somebody else and talk about how much they don't like me. And then they're going to find somebody else. And then they're going to build a group and talk about how much they hate me. But the funny thing is, and the reality, the reality is they don't even like each other, Mm. but they all gathered to talk about me. Yeah. Now, if that isn't toxic, I don't know what is. Yeah. But here's this, what I would focus on in life. Let's look at the reverse. I am loved. And Zach, you're here with me because you respect me and I respect you. Yeah. And now when I leave, I'm going to talk to somebody else who I respect and love. And then I'm going to, I'll, I'll say this was a wonderful experience. Now there's a group of people who now respect you, love me, and would love to get to know you better. Yeah. So that you, you know, hopefully build a relationship because that's how powerful you are. People only operate from, one, their own level of consciousness, but also their own level of how much they love themselves, right? I think you lash out at people when you are, you know, there's something within yourself that you're lashing out. Like everything I believe is kind of like a mirror, um, you know, and, and what we see in other people and what, you know, how other people behave is more of a reflection of them, you know, and, and how they're feeling about themselves. It depends if there's an undercurrent of unresolved issues Mm. that have not been surfaced due to oppression, due to fear, due to loyalty. And then when you're provoked, anyone and everyone is capable of breaking. But I believe once we break, that's the opportunity to repair, to innovate, to rebuild, to rise and fly growing up we're raised and conditioned to believe certain things to act a certain way to do things that we think is going to bring us fulfillment whether it's to get married and have kids and have the white picket fence only to realize we're achieving these things not because we're really pursuing any sort of you know happiness but we're just doing it to kind of appease people around us because we think that that'll bring us that'll bring some sort of acceptance from our peers when in reality they're also just miserable going on the hamster wheel themselves and it's really just about you know I think as we become adults it's about breaking down and like you said unbecoming all of those things that we were told we were supposed to be and really getting back to to the the true nature of who we actually are we're getting back to the root and the seed yeah um I'm I love planting and working with my hands. I have a green thumb and botany, et cetera. 
there's with citrus trees, this is a known fact. If you have bad roots with the citrus tree, it doesn't matter how much retailing of the soil, right? How much nutrients or artificial nutrients you have in it or put into it, let's just say, there will be no fruits. There will be none. You need to rip that thing out and start brand new because it has bad roots. So that's what I, in, in that little analogy, just want to you know remind people is not only focus on your root, your seed that goes burst into a root, but understand what is, what is your soil? How are you mending your soil? It's this compacted soil that there is no bacteria growth in there that's going to help you know, the calcium, magnesium, potassium, chromium, you know, get into the root and keep it flourishing and have a full cycle. You know, do you want to have a harvest? And if so, you really need to let go of these desires and understand who you're hanging out around and why, what is these influences and um, understand that there's going to be storms, that there's going to be new seasons and to be ready for that, that we, we, we cannot escape life life will happen yeah that we must embrace it we must embrace the pains of our, our roots growing we must embrace the pains <coughs> excuse me of our roots hitting rocks unforeseen obstacles i do know this if we move forward in life we will get there fast but if we go together we're going to go further yeah and that's a beautiful thing you know life is so short why not share it with somebody else let's say like in a marriage or in a friendship really build something that's lasting or everlasting or that constantly needs tending like the soil the joy that it will bring you is is exponential but going you know doing everything on your own terms and your way or the highway is um, may lead you to alone yeah unhappy unhealthy and nobody and nobody and nobody wants that none of our elders want that for us yeah yeah I am curious why you decided to do reality, like why you went back to reality, if that was something that initially just kind of didn't feel in alignment for you. What was the pull to go back to that? Was there something you were trying to prove? Was there something that you were hoping to correct? Was there a relationship you were looking to mend or something within yourself that you were hoping to find through that experience? <coughs> well, the show, it was... Um... It was shot two seasons back to back. It was a strategy. For it was you. just business strategy for yeah. me, which we did not get renewed for season four, by the way. There's no more bling. It's done. This may be the reveal of it. Nobody wants to see people attack people anymore. I, I originally got on the show and pitched the show to my mentor and for love. I love my ex. She was my best friend and she could not, she wasn't surviving. We were selling everything just to live. And it's because Los Angeles is very expensive. Entrepreneurial yeah. living and delegation is very expensive. We had successes. So I had an opportunity and I was already working with somebody who at that time had me in a hypnosis almost of who he was. And now I understand better as a producer myself, I'm a developer. So I didn't understand that that person produces television and the only style of television that is gossip television. So his idea is I love creating things that are going to turn people against him. So, and I know he's not the head of the company. He may just be taking orders. So I didn't know that. So moving forward with the show concept and then seeing how it was a lot of the footage that you saw of me, like I was saying before, massive undercurrents of betrayal, massive undercurrents of lies and deceits, telling you everything you want to hear. And then the footage was that he was shot it on his phone. Well, why did I why did I go back? I I, I went back for a couple things. Uh, and to keep it simple is I went back to promote what I'm now doing now to put the eyes on who I am. That's that's what it is to put the eyes on me. Yeah. If they if the world saw me one way, let's continue to 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 see what Andrew's truly about. Yeah. You know, overnight on social media, I went from maybe 80,000 to 20,000 overnight drop. Wow. And then within one year, 
I've never bought a bot. I've never bought followers, supporters, oh, likes, yeah. right? There's, there's absolutely no need for that. That's the saddest thing in the world. Uh, one <laughs> of the agree. saddest things. I agree. And then it went with one year to 121 plus all organic. And, and it, it, I wanted people to, again, view what, who I truly was. Yeah. I'm not going to let anybody write my narrative. Yeah. They already smeared my name to the best of their ability, you know, with zero Fs given. Yeah. They're like, let's just run on this. And why would why wouldn't they run on this? Yeah. If they already have an agenda based on the shows they've created, right. the genres, the gossip, the throwing, the breaking, this violence, why wouldn't I be outcasted? Just think about that. I'm a man of the cloth. Why wouldn't I? Jesus is always mocked in in, in Hollywood. They always have some artists hanging. They they always have horns on. They're always going to these lavish these parties you know and i just feel really bad for the castmates truly i do because they not all of them are bad people i would say the majority are are good people they're just uh brought astray yeah you know they were also betrayed and they spent a lot of their money to get in front of a camera and things were promised mm. and then they're cut out of the whole scene like a dear friend of mine um, who's in the show, I don't need to name who it was, but gave them their house, $150,000, and then they cut them out of the whole episode. Another one spent over $100,000 on another one of their parties. I was in one of the scenes, and they were in it for like two seconds. Hmm. And that's not what they promised. Um, so again, I went back to show you can go against all the odds and still write your story. Yeah, you can be tested and and still come out not unscathed, but you can come out rebuilt, renewed and bettered. This show bettered me. I will. I will honestly say that I haven't been uh, globally smeared and <laughs> before and it has made me a, a stronger warrior, you know, do you uh, think, so do I you am grateful for it. The, the battle test, I guess. I don't know. Do you think it also maybe kind of made you come face to face with maybe some of the parts, um, you know, I because what I've heard from other people that have done reality TV is that like sometimes it exposed me to parts of myself that I wasn't even fully aware of. And so I was able to kind of work on those parts of, of myself because I was able to then kind of see myself in a different in a different light, or maybe I saw myself getting caught up in the drama, or maybe I saw myself doing things that didn't feel, you know, in alignment with who I know I am. And so from there, I was able to kind of learn from that experience. I was already in therapy. I've been in therapy since I was a child. I grew up in a dysfunctional home, a broken home. My parents divorced when I was in kindergarten. There was always violence was a communication style. There was alcoholism, gang culture. There was drugs. Uh, I grew up in the not fully in the streets, but we grew up in poverty. We grew up on food stamps until I was mid high school, traveled to many different schools. I've been bullied my whole life. And I grew up um, to what I've been told physically attractive. So when you're in those uh, environments and you're more, uh, have more masculine slash feminine features, you're going to get picked on. And I've had, I'm really a calm guy. Yeah. I, I've always been, um, it takes a lot to get me going and I am in martial arts. Yeah. So discipline and honor is number one. They, they broke me though. When you film a show for three years to build the pilot and there's a lot, I mean, an undercurrent like uh, a tsunami and they have three cameras on you at all times. Anyone will break. Anyone's fallible. Yeah. I'm insufficient like everybody else. And, and they figured out out of the, you know, the giant, all the buttons, <laughs> you know, they, they found the one. Yeah. And then, then they, you know, want to make a mockery out of the whole thing. And what hurt the most, what hurt the absolute most is having somebody not protect me in, in the light. Are you, um, you referring to your girlfriend or to the producers? Anyone and everyone who knows me. Yeah. Because they allowed that mischaracterization to be run with as part of a story that was disingenuous to who I would imagine. I mean, at least just my interactions with you and my experience with you, you've always been very, you know, very down to earth, very calm, very 
peaceful. I mean, your energy is always very calming. I've made peace with it all yeah. and I've prayed for them all and I have forgiveness and there's, and I, and I will have mercy, but not one of those people have came to me and said, I was scared, man. I didn't, you know, I saw what happened to you and, uh, I didn't want that to happen to me. And, uh, but you know what? I'm not, I'm not a victim of it all and I'm not yeah. a survivor. I'm a thriver. There you go. You're a warrior. I'm a, I'm a warrior. And uh, I think we all choose to be a warrior when we're knocked down or forced down and we choose to get back up. Then we choose to keep climbing. That makes you a warrior. Yeah. You know, I've been fighting my whole life and I prefer to be a lion. Do you feel like the um, the lessons you've learned from martial arts, do you feel like they've kind of helped you build that resilience? There's so much humility into it. There's so much sportsmanship into it. I was late for about five days in a row. Five minutes. Five minutes. And my coach came up to me at the end of the week and he says, you're doing a spectacular job. You're really there for everybody. You're, you're learning. Um, keep up the stride. But you owe everybody 25 minutes, okay? Figure out how you're going to do it. Yeah. I was like, what? So he goes, no, you were late five minutes every day. I can understand once. I can, you know, life happens, but it's been every day. So there's, there's 15 people here. You owe them all 25 minutes or don't come back tomorrow. And, and that's fair. Yeah. Life isn't fair, but it can, it can be when you're on, you know, that people that love each other. And I learned from that. Yeah, we learn from the unfairness of. Life. I also learn from from the sh the show. Yeah, I also feel like reality TV is entertainment, right? So we watch it the same way we would watch Power Rangers in action. You know, we want to see the combat, we want to see the <laughs> fights. In that sense, do you feel like that? I mean, as you know, as you said, Bling probably won't come back for a season four. But do you think it's because people are getting less interested in the in the drama and the conflict? And how do you see that genre kind of changing? How would you improve it? Well, there's a difference between scripted, yeah, and a reality that's not reality. You know, when you're filming a reality television, they tell they tell you come on Friday to this location. We want to film this, this, and this, and we're trying to get this, this, and this. Yeah. And then when you're there and you're around the table, restaurant, et cetera, they're going to, into your ear, mm. into your ear. And then the third person, no one's in my ear. What's going on? Mm. Then they go, go. And they just let, you know, they attack you. So That's not healthy. So how would you change? That's not healthy for the person. That's not healthy for anybody who wants to provoke pain. Yeah. Um, now going into script or power Rangers, there are, a, uh, there's an act structure, right? There's a problem. There's a solution. Then there's a resolution. There is no resolution in what they're doing because the trauma that, that follows it is only affecting that person. It's like when record executives or Ari Emanuel stepped down and he was saying, yo, yeah, we do hire artists who have issues. We know that. And we know that it's affecting their culture, their health. Yeah. We know that it, they are taking their lives. He's like, you want to know who it's not affecting? All the executives, all the producers. But we buy nice houses, nice cars, and our kids go in private, and we fly private. So I think, I, I believe there are ulterior motives at play. And when you're inscripted, it's all right there. And things are rewritten on the day for the betterment of the show and the, and the, the cast as a whole, because that cast is going to be the brand and they're going to travel the world of the States to talk about it. Now, anybody on a reality show that's promoting it and they're really pumped about it. I'm praying for them. Yeah. They're already enough. They don't need a show to feel that they are a celebrity or, you know, they're already enough. So I'm praying for them. <laughs> As and as you should, and as I'm sure they very much need. 
So what's next for you? Where do you see? I mean, obviously, you said you want to get into filmmaking, maybe doing some documentaries. Is that something that you're actively building towards? Or something that absolutely. You know, so yeah. At Night Owl Studio, we have lots of different decks and treatments with scripts available. And this is in series, uh, documentary series, home improvement, feature films. Those are all ready to go. We're shopping them out right now. They're in development. Also, I have partnered with a, a, a mentor of mine who, excuse me, wasn't a mentor for that. He's been my business partner, but a mentor subconsciously because, excuse me, I read his book during the pandemic. And this is really interesting. He has a book that's called Better Selling Through Storytelling. Better Selling Through Storytelling. My story is the content that will drive sales, right? So when I was going through somewhat of a hard time being attacked so frequently uh, and from all angles, I went into a dark hole, not meaning dark and negative, but I went to focus and I went to break and to come out a, a transformed person. And in doing so, I read a lot. And in that book, Better Selling Through Storytelling, I was like, you know, I need to share my story, continue to write my narrative where it is concise, compelling and engaging. Where I'm not the hero in my life. But I'm showing people how they can be the hero in their life. Like the, the audience is the hero. Right. Right. Well, I ended up reaching out to that author. He's a five-time New York Times bestseller, keynote speaker, TED Talker, incredible man, keynote. And I said, let's start a business. And he's like, what do you want to call it? And I said, the superhero you. And he's like, I like that. Tell me more about it. Yeah. I was like, well, I did my research on you. You don't have any kids. You don't want to have kids. You're not married. And who's going to keep your legacy moving forward? My mission would be to keep your legacy because you, uh, your direct target is to corporate America as a keynote speaker. Mine is from Power Rangers. My demographic is from 12 to 35. Yeah. So all that stuff that we're already teaching, that you're already teaching, had a story, let's remind them of who they are. Mm. And this unbecoming, right, will be this new create your own adventure. Mm. So we created a business called the Superhero You, which you go to superherou.com. There's a uh, social media that we just started. And there'll be things posted here shortly. This is still only four months into the inception, but in doing so, we have partnered um, with people who've worked with Activision, Warner Brothers, professors at Stanford, uh, PhD, um, English, um, the wonderful people who we are creating online modules that you take in a test and it's going to not only kind of give you your personality types, your enneagrams, uh, an animal that, you know, I wouldn't say spirit animal because it's not a <laughs> spirit, but yeah. what you, uh, exude and it takes you on a quest because there's two different kinds of heroes in life. There's one that's projected into the world like superman and he has to kind of figure out everything and then there's another one who's an average joe like bilbo baggins that goes on this big quest so we're sending people on two different ways again it's to create your own adventure and along the way you get badges and you become the superhero in your own life by basically reminding yourself of who you are where you came from what you've gone through and what's relevant right now and having a vision for the future so that's what i'm focused on um, and, and on top of creating compelling, educational, inspiring, delightful content for all ages. I love that. Our hope and our main intent is to honor families, to honor the individual, and to keep families together. There we go. I love it. Andrew, where can people go to learn more about, about Night Owl Studios, about what you're, what you're building and how they can support you? I would say the easiest way Google me, Andrew Gray, <laughs> G-R-A-Y. It's all Andrew there. Andrew Gray. Yes, it's all there. Follow him on social media um, and continue to, to, to spread the love. Maybe cut back on some of the drama. Start to put some, some better content into your sphere. And yeah, hopefully going into this holiday season, we can all be a little more grateful, appreciative, and you know, try to just be better in the world. Be better and, and because depression's on a rise. Yeah. You know, isolation is on a rise. Yeah. We have to get out there and live life. We cannot just exist. Yeah. We are going to run into red light. But I promise you, there are green lights as well. Let's just focus on those and be grateful for every red light that we get. 
you and, know? And, and stop being afraid of the red lights. Like the red lights are a part of life. The failures, the struggle. Like I think so many people are afraid of the hurdles and they're afraid of the bumps and they're afraid of the conflict. But it's like a red light always turns green. Conflict will always lead to resolution as long as you continue to go through it. I think so many people get worried because they get stuck in the middle of the fog and they don't realize that as long as you just keep putting one foot in front of the other, eventually you make it through the fog. It's really, really hard. We can all take ourselves out. Yeah, I'm about to um, say goodbye here shortly. Um, I have to go to a funeral um, of a dear friend of mine and... um, just anybody, we all can take ourselves out at any time. Life is hard. Yeah. And that's so why it's important. Please seek out the professional help that you need. Yeah. If you need therapy, or if you don't think you need therapy, <laughs> just go check it out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't need to have all my uh, sensors go off on my, my BMW to not take it into BMW. Yeah. If I'm getting my, my tires filled up, shoot, check out it all out. Check yeah. it out, you know? Yeah. And they're like, you actually needed some fluid. We already did the break in the back. I'm like, well, who's paying for that? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but, uh, you know, <laughs> all right, take care. Take care. And you're going to need tires mm. in 10,000 miles. Yeah. Are they expensive? Of course they are. Okay, cool. You know, so, uh, yeah, go out there, guys. Um, keep listening to, to Zach right here. But, uh, man, it's been a wonderful time. And we're going to see each other in person. We're going to yes. continue on. And, and when I get grayscale going the podcast i'd love to have you on i would love to and we'll dive into all the gray areas all right thank you so much <laughs> thank enjoy you, the rest Andrew. of your holidays too god bless you thank you you too thank you guys for listening to hashtag no filter with zach peter this was a truly unfiltered conversation with andrew gray and i was very very grateful for him and his candor and his openness and his honesty and his humility and his willingness to kind of just put himself on the table and and share. And hopefully you guys took some some good nuggets away from our conversation. Hopefully um, you go and give Andrew some love and some support. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you to Leah Quinn. Leah Quinn, um, who also was featured on Bling Empire. She is the one that introduced Andrew and I. And, you know, I got to hang out with Andrew at the launch of her Soju, which was awesome. Um, And I'm just grateful to Leah, grateful to Andrew, and grateful to everybody tuning in. We got a fun, fun episode or a fun holiday season full of some good episodes to come. So stay tuned. Give me a follow at Just Plain Zach if you want to keep up with me. Or you can keep up with the show at No Filter with Zach. It's always a good time over there. And then if you want to follow Andrew... You can follow me at Andrew Gray, at Andrew Gray. Easy. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. All right, guys. Love you, mean it. Have a wonderful weekend. I will chat with you on Thursday night for our Thursday Night Live. Airs on the podcast Friday. So till then, have a good one. Love you, mean it. Bye.